I love in Matthew chapter 7, where it says, Matthew chapter 7 says this, watch out for the false prophets. They come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ferocious wolves. By their fruit you will recognize them. Now, just so you know, that churches and Christian communities and Christian area places have wolves that the devil sends. You don't know they're wolves. They look like sheep. They look like Christians. They look like brothers and sisters of the Lord, but they're wolves. And they're out to destroy you. And when he says false prophet, he does not mean somebody who has a microphone. This could be in a, a small group. This could be a person who becomes your friend who's out to destroy you. The devil's brought in a friend. This could be a relative. This could be somebody uh, you work with who says, I'm a born-again Christian, but they're really a sheep in wolf's clothing. Then what happens is in Revelation chapter 2, the church we deal with today, and I love this, is, is Thyatira. And it says this, to the angels of the church in Thyatira, these are words of the Son of God, whose eyes are like blazing fire, whose feet are like burnished bronze. I know your deeds, your love, your faith, your service, your perseverance, that you are now doing more than you did at first. Then he goes on and says, nevertheless, I have this against you. You tolerate that woman Jezebel, who calls herself a prophet, a wolf in sheep's clothing. By her teaching, she misleads my servants into sexual immorality, eating of uh, food sacrificed to idols, I have given her time to repent of immorality, but she is unwilling. In other words, she does not want to hear the voice of God. So I cast her on a bed of suffering. I will make those who commit adultery with her suffer intensely unless they repent of her, her ways. I will strike down her children because sins follow generational curse. Okay. I will strike down her children, then all the churches will know that I am he who searches hearts and minds, and I will repay each of you according to your deeds. Now, here is the sermon. Are you ready? And I'm going to read this to you again. I am he who searches every heart and every mind, and I will repay each one of us in this room according to your deed, your action. Now I say to the rest of you in Thyatira, to those who do not hold to the teachings of Jezebel and have not learned Satan's so-called deep secrets, I will not impose any other burdens on you except to hold on to what you have until I come. To the one who is victorious and does my will to the end. And what is it? Victorious how? By doing the will of God to the end. I will give authority over the nation that one will rule, uh, rule them with an iron scepter and will dash them in pieces like potter. Just as I have received authority from my father. I will also give that one the morning star. Whoever has ears, let him hear what the Holy Spirit says to church. Now, let's stop and let's go back to the beginning because I've lost you. Here we go. Are you ready? The church in Thyatira, the born-again Christians who are solid, what does he say? I know your deeds. I know your love. I know your faith, your service, your perseverance, that you are not doing, you are doing more now than when you're first saved. Now, let me just ask you this, and please, be honest. Don't, don't say anything out loud. When you first came to Christ, are you doing more for Christ then than you're doing now? Are you praying more? Are you seeking? Are you witnessing more? Okay? Are you doing more? Or have you moved into just comfortable things you like to do instead of what God wants you to do? And, and for some of us, we're witnessing more and we're seeking God more and stuff like this. And for some of us, we've lost it. And what he says is, he starts off with this, I know your deeds, I know your actions. And then he says, well, how? He says, uh, your, your love, and, which is an action. He says, your faith, which is an action. And service and perseverance, these are all actions. And he says, I know your heart, I know your mind, and I know your deeds. And he says, I'm very happy with some of you because some of you, and this is the excellent part of this, he says, some of you, are you ready? Some of you are doing more than you did when you first came to Christ. But then he goes on and he talks about Jezebel. Oh, 
Jezebel in the Old Testament was the queen of Ahab, and she hated people who loved Jehovah, who loved God. And she, matter of fact, she was out just to kill all the priests of God. She was out, and Elijah had to stop her, and so forth. Jezebel in the Old Testament had a controlling spirit. She was evil, she was demonic, and she was out to destroy anybody who believed in God, just like so many persecuted countries today. Now, here's the thing. In Revelations, there's people in the church, and it's not their cult name, Jezebel, but it could be a man or a woman, and I hate it when a preacher says it's only women who do this, it's not. The fact is this, that in the New Testament, Jezebel in Revelations is a lady or a guy in the church it could be a small group leader, it could be a friend, it could be a pastor, it could be anybody, okay? And what you are is you're, you're, you're coming alongside somebody, you're becoming a friend, and you're trying to, to be a prophet to them, you're trying to mislead them in teaching, you're trying to lead them into sin. And people who are associated with Jezebel will be cursed also, and your children and her children will be cursed for generations to come. Now, here, here's the thing. Is Jezebel real? Yes. Is Jezebel uh, around? Well, we constantly as pastors are looking for Jezebel. And when I say this is not just female Jezebels, but male Jezebels. We are constantly looking for the wolves in sheep's clothing. And I, I, I know you don't, you know, we look really nice, okay? But one of the, tr the things that we deal with as pastors is to be able to make sure that Jezebel doesn't come into church on the Queensway. And for this reason, some people say, well, you know, they, they show up to church and they have the biggest Bible and they have, you know, you know, tattooed on their head, I'm a born again Christian and all this stuff. And it's like, well, you know what? You just hang around for six months and let us just test you to see if you're Jezebel or if you're real for real. Oh, no, you know, like I, I just finished. Oh, yeah, yeah. And it's like, give me a break. We make people jump hoops in order to, to test them on Jezebel. Why? Because we're terrified of wolves coming in in sheep's clothing. Now, somebody says to me, do we have any wolves? Well, if we do, I guarantee you, we'll get rid of them. We'll get rid of them. Let me just say, then he goes on, but he says to the rest of you, Thyre, Tyra, he says this. He says, just hold on to the teaching and don't do what Satan wants you to do. And, you know, I'm not going to give the same punishment to you because you are being faithful God. But then he ends up with this incredible thing in Thyatira where he says this. He says, to you, I want you to be victorious. How? I want you to do God's will to the end. Why? Because when you get to heaven, you're going to rule and reign with me. You're going to reign with me for eternity. Now, let me just take you to this, okay? Some people uh, have this concept that when we get to heaven, all we're going to do is stand and kneel and worship the Lord um, uh, for eternity, and that's all we're going to do, okay? That's not true. The Bible said, Jesus says, I go prepare a house, a mansion for you. The fact is this, God also, the Bible says, he's, we're going to rule and reign with him for eternity, and in Revelations, in Thyatira, it says, if you remain faithful to me, you do the will to the end, and you are victorious, you will, you, we, you will rule with me also. Point is this, when you study the Bible, God has purpose in eternity. We're just not going to stand around for eternity, just sing, you know, you're the Alpha and Omega for eternity. We, God has purpose. Matter of fact, some theologians believe that God created the entire universe so that we, as born-again Christian and Old Testament believers, we will rule and reign with him for eternity, which gives me, I love it, because I love these Star Wars and, and Galactica and Chris Pratt flying off all over. I'm thinking, man, this is going to be so cool. And I, I hope I get a spaceship when I get to heaven, you know? And like Dawson is 14 light years away, and I get to, you know, look, and I want a leather suit too. I want to look cool, man. You know. 
But the craziest thing is this. Some of us think we're just going to, you know, when I get to heaven, I'm just going to worship the Lord and do fat nothing. Well, God bless you, you know. I hope he puts me in charge of all the fast food joints. No calories, no cholesterol, eat as much as you want. I mean, seriously. Here, here's the craziest thing. I need to talk to you now about the application of this because this is really heavy. The application is through the Holy Spirit. You can't do this on your own. Number one, you need to, and there are four E's that go with number one, and you have to do all of them together. You need to examine. You need to examine to see if there's a Jezebel in your life. There could be a Jezebel that you're listening to on a podcast. It could be a Jezebel on television. It could be a Jezebel in your family that has come into your life. You have to examine to see if it's Jezebel. A Jezebel looks like sheep, but they are wolves. They are going to mislead you. You know, the person uh, is just not biblically sound. Now, they're pretty close, but they're not. And what they're doing is misleading you and they're leading you down where you're becoming weak and you're not becoming what God wants you. Matter of fact, they're watering you down. And once you start to examine this and you start to examine, am I doing the will of God or am I following this Jezebel? Then the second thing you do is evaluate. Examination without evaluation is totally useless. Evaluate, okay, what does God want me through the Holy Spirit to do? Does God want me to just, uh, you know, get rid of Jezebel totally or should I try to gently restore Jezebel like Revelation 2 says to Jezebel, you need to ask God forgive and she says, no, I'm not going to therefore I'm going to curse you and your children and those around you. And then the third part is this, you need to educate yourself. Educate yourself in why is this person a Jezebel and what should I do to, to, to isolate myself so I do not fall into the trap. And then the last thing is this, you need to edify yourself. The fact is this, examination, evaluation, and, and, and education without building yourself up. Edification means to build yourself up. If you're not building yourself up, God, it, 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 he's not helping you with the first three E's. Whenever you go through Holy Spirit examination, Holy Spirit evaluation, Holy Spirit education from the Word, you should come out built up in God. You should, now that means he might rip some stuff off you, but it's in order to build you up. Later on, I'll give you an illustration of this. It breaks my heart to give it, but I will. Number two, you need to open your eyes. See what the Lord is seeing. Some of us are following certain things that are not of God. Now, let me just take you to this illustration, and I'll give you an illustration of this. If you're a thinker, you're sitting there saying, well, how do I know, Billy, you're not the Jezebel in my life? How do I know this church is in Jezebel? How do I know you're not a wolf in sheep's clothing? Let me tell you something. We have this church right now through the Holy Spirit set up to really go anti-Jezebel. I'll give you an example. A pastor who pastors a church without any accountability is probably leaning toward Jezebel. And the fact is this, I do not appoint the board. What happens is the board is voted in by the membership every year. There are some churches that say every five years. No, every year. That's uh, so we have accountability. I work with the board. The board works with me. We both report to the membership. The fact is that any board member can come into my office and challenge me. Matter of fact, the pastors can come in and challenge me on my teaching. People in the church can challenge me on my teaching. And what happens is this. A uh, 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 Jezebel would not be challenged at all. He or she would set it up so that they are, you know, how dare you? And what happens is we, we not only go through examination, but the point is the, the pastors, we examine the pastors' uh, teaching and lifestyle and so forth. We examine small groups. We examine uh, volunteers. The fact is this, volunteers have to sign a volunteer in ministry form in order to volunteer here so that we do not have a Jezebel. I mean, we are trying to make this as tight as we can in the Holy Spirit so that the wolves can't get in. 
Now, let me just take you, open, open your eyes so you see what the Lord is seeing. The Lord is starting to clean up the North American, and matter of fact, the international church. There's a number of pastors in the last year, year and a half, who are cowboys, independent spirit, walking, you know, drinking as much as they can and preaching as, and trying to let on like they're, they're celebrities and all this stuff. And it was making the heart of God sick. They were walking as Jezebels, not as men of God. And the Bible says in the last day, he's gonna clean up the bride, which is the church, which you and I are part of, so that we are presented to him clean, clean and holy. And God is cleaning up the church, which you're starting to see a number of pastors internationally and around the world, and even here in the GTA, they're falling. And the reason is this, they, they looked like sheep, but they were wolves. And this also is not only pastors, but people in the church. I have seen people come in who look like, wow, these are, thank you, Jesus. These are going to be superstar leaders, and they were wolves in sheep clothing. Matter of fact, here's the thing I have in my head. If they look too good, they probably aren't. Number three, do his will to the end. I would rather do his will to the end by being by myself than being surrounded by a bunch of superstars who call themselves godly, but they're Jezebels. And, and, and let me share this with you. When Jesus says, take up your cross daily, and he puts the word daily in there, he really means it. And some of these Jezebels who paint, oh, the Christian walk is so easy, we're going to be so blessed, and all this stuff, they're just Jezebels. Jezebel, they're just out for the money. And God have mercy on their soul. And then the last one I give to you is this rule and reign with him for eternity. What you do now prepares you for what you do later. Let me share this with you. We are not, like some people believe, all equal in heaven. I'm sorry to tell you this. The fact is this. What you do now prepares you for what you are in heaven. Okay? And let me tell you, the martyr is the highest on the list the martyr who gives their life for Christ. But here's the craziest thing. You and I probably won't be martyrs. We don't have that honor. But what we do here determines how we rule and reign with him. And for some of you, you're just saying, I don't care what I do in heaven. I just got to get through the gate. You are, your theology sucks. As a matter of fact, you probably aren't a Christian. I'll tell you why. The fact is this, one, I do not do it because I want to get through the gate. I do it because I love God and he's Lord of my life and I want to serve him. Whether I get through the gate or not, that's not the issue. The, gate, the thing is I just want God in my life. Now I tell you this story and this story tells it all and this story breaks my heart because I have to tell it. I, was a, I, just, I wasn't even, no, I was a teenager. Just let me take a drink so I can get through this. I was a teenager. I really wanted to serve God. I really wanted to um, uh, see what, what, what's in the Bible happen. I was reading all about miracles and stuff like this. Matter of fact, when, when I was young, I was um, under 12, I used to go down Lake Ontario and just try to walk on the water when nobody was around. Just, you know, like, I wanted to... Seriously, it was just like, Lord, you know. I mean, I was eight years old. I walked up to my grandmother's casket and said, in Jesus' name, get up. You know, and, and, and she did it. And it really bothered me, you know. And all of a sudden, my, my dad had a friend. And he was a man of God. And when I say this, he really was a man of God. And what he did was he took a bunch of us when we were young teenagers and just started to have Bible studies with us and mentor us to see healing, faith healing, see miracles, to start to see the Bible come alive. And he was very biblical. Did you hear this? He was very biblical. He was the one who taught me how to pray through. You know that wall where I don't want to pray anymore? He taught me how to get through that wall into the realm of the Holy Spirit praying through. He taught me how to study the Word where it's just not reading verses, but 
taking it apart. What does it mean living sacrifice? What does it mean holy? What does it mean please? I mean, it, he, he, this, this old man, and when I say old man, he was an old man. He, he, uh, he had a pure heart. He just wanted, I mean, I saw, uh, he, unbelievable stuff. But what happened is he started, which we did not know, get into financial difficulties. And because of decision making that he did that was not godly, yet he justified it, the hand of God left him. Now listen to me, the hand of God is either on you or off you, it's not maybe. Okay, you either got the hand on you or you got the, it's not like, yes, he's still touching. No, he's either on or he's off. And this guy was, um, he made some decisions that were stupid. He should have come clean on it. He didn't, and therefore he started to have the heart of Saul and David where he was trying to justify living in sin and yet um, still trying to let on like he's man of God. And we didn't know this at first, but what we did is when we got together weekly for this Bible study, some of his teaching, well, my dad taught me to examine. When somebody teaches you somebody something, examine it and evaluate it and educate you. Don't, don't just take it for, you know, like, uh, okay, everything he says is 100%. Matter of fact, don't ever do that with me. Go home and study it, see if I'm telling you the truth. Challenge yourself. And so what happened is, some of the stuff he started teaching, it sounded a little wacky, and my friend and I, was, we would go home and we start studying, and then I start asking, my dad, I start asking people at the church, and it was like, who taught you this? It was like 95% true, but that 5% was just totally not of God. I mean, it was like, the, the, and what the old man did is, he went from being a sheep and he started going down into a wolf, and eventually became a wolf. And my, my, I had just got married and so forth, and my wife had to help me. I had to distance myself from this, and it's breaking hearts. See, when you're 12, 13 years old, and this is one of your spiritual mentors, and you've seen signs and wonders, you've seen people healed, you've seen salvation, you've seen uh, demonic people uh, set free and all this stuff and then all of a sudden you start to see this guy go from man of God down to wolf. It's breaking your heart. And I remember going to his house with my wife uh, because the Bible says take somebody with you and sitting down with him and pleading, look, you know, like, what are you doing? Like, and I remember the fire of hell coming out of him and kicking me out of the house. Matter of fact, to the point that we, we were scared he was going to become violent. And my wife and I got in the car and we drove away scared to death at his, his behavior. Just like Saul in the Old Testament was with David. But during this time, somebody says, well, how did you find a... See, the point number one of application is exactly what God did to me. Through the Holy Spirit, he, he made me start to examine. I didn't just take everything he said like, oh, yes but I started to examine it, and then I started evaluating, is this biblical or not? And I started seeing, no, this is, this is, this is not, this is nuts. And then I started to, to educate myself on uh, having distance, and the Bible says, go to your brother, in Matthew 18, go to your brother and, and, and confront him when there's a wrong, and, and so I started doing that, and I took my wife with me, of course, just to you know, be there, and so forth. And, and it, you know what, the fact is this, by, by gaining away from him, I started to build myself back up in God, where God started to come back to me, and the hand of God never left me, but the hand of God be started to become more precious to me, where I started seeing it wasn't because of this guy, it was because of the word of God I put in my heart, I, signs and wonders follow them that believe, and I started seeing it again. What, what the Holy Spirit did to me was he opened my eyes, and I saw what the Lord was seeing. To the world, this guy looked like a man of God. I mean, he, matter of fact, this guy showed up at a couple of my churches I'm preaching and would sit at the back, and when he walked in, I, I, I knew 
the presence of evil had just come in. If my eyes were blind, I would know the presence of evil had walked in. This is how bad it was. And I remember once being preaching and, 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 and he walked in the back and I had to, I, I just immediately, I didn't see him, but I immediately called out, in the name of Jesus, whatever just happened, I come against it right now. The demonic force. And the reason is this, that this guy, because he made a mistake and, and went into sin, and the hand of God left him, he could not repent, but he had this controlling spirit, and, he, and this controlling spirit would not release, and what happened is this, he fell, and he just kept falling, falling, falling till he died in disgrace. And what the Lord taught me was, keep your eyes open. Keep your eyes open. Keep your eyes open and do his will to the end. Because Billy, one day, he wants you, Father God wants you to rule and reign with him, which is gonna be such an honor. And I really don't care what Father God asks me to do when I get to heaven. It's just such an honor to do anything for him. It'll be just so, I mean, it, it, I hope he puts me in charge of washing floors because the floors are gold. I mean, just, I hope I'm in charge of polishing or something like that. I don't care what I do. It's just such an honor. But here's the truth. The wolves are out to get you. The wolves are out to get you. Now, I can see you're just so excited saying, I came here and now I'm going to be spiritually suicidal. Not at all. Matter of fact, the total opposite. You know how you wear masks in order to not get COVID? Well, this sermon is this. Protect yourself from the wolves so that you can do the will of God so you can then one day when you get to heaven rule and reign with him. And there's sometimes when you got to give a hard sermon like this and you know, and now some of you, you're, you're paranoid. Oh, my Uncle Herbie, he's, he's a Jezebel. No, he's just probably an old grumpy man who's a control freak, but it's not demonic. He's just a grumpy old man. I'm talking, there's a difference here. And this is where you get a hold of the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit says, no, that is demonic. Or no, that's just natural Uncle Herbie who's just grumpy, who just needs a kick in his butt. My, my biggest fear is some of you are going to go paranoid out of here and, you know, everybody's a Jezebel. And it's like, grow up, get a life. But on the other hand, there's some of you, you just take life so easy. I mean, anybody can say anything to you and you'll do it. And you need to grow up. You need to understand, you know, not everybody who speaks in your life is from God. I mean, I have a really hard time with some of the seniors in our church. The people they watch on TV and they just get sucked in. A few years ago, I nearly, I nearly shot the TV. I was so mad. I don't own a gun, but I nearly went out and bought one just so I could shoot the TV. I'm watching this TV evangelist, and I, I hate watching TV, but I was watching it, and this guy comes out and goes, I just feel in my heart. Yes, and he turns to his wife. Oh, Doris, I feel in my heart. You people who are watching me, if you give me a thousand dollars right now, you'll have a hundredfold. I just feel it in my and you know, talking like he's in the Holy Spirit and man of God. And he's you know, and his wife is sitting there and you know, of course she you know, she doesn't say two words because she's so dumb, but she just like this, because she knows, cha-ching, cha-ching, the money's coming so she can go buy another Cadillac, right? And it, so, people, you want a hundredfold, which is a hundred thousand, right? Send me a thousand dollars right now. I just feel in my heart. And he's talking spiritual, right? And, you know, I'm just sitting there going, in the name of Jesus, you Jezebel, I come against you. I come against you in the name of Jesus. Lord, zap him on TV. Zap his wife, too. 
Sap all of them in Jesus' name. And I can just see in my head all these old people. Oh, I'm going to get 100000 Oh, say, And these people don't even have $1,000 to send. They sell their gold teeth in their mouth in order to get it. So, you know. And then there's no hundredfold. And somebody says to me, well, you know, I'm not that stupid. Well, here's the truth. The wolf isn't stupid either. The wolf is going to hit you where you're the weakest. Denzel Washington said to Will Smith at the Oscars, after he, Will Smith slapped Chris Rock, Denzel Washington went up to him and says, at your highest point, that's when the devil's going to hit you to make it the lowest. Here's the point, people. I say this in love, wakey, wakey. Wakey, wakey. If the scripture is fitting your lifestyle, your lifestyle and the scripture aren't in tune because you're not reading the scripture properly, it hurts, it's hard, it's difficult being a Christian. You take up your cross, and if you think it's easy, you're not reading the whole Bible. Oh, please. Now, here's the beautiful part. Are you ready? He says to the church in Thyatira, is this, for you people who do not follow Jezebel, guess what? I'm going to bless you. Guess what? When you, when you finish this race and you do the will to the end, guess what? You're going to rule and reign with me. You're going to have a blast for eternity. I'm going to wipe away all your tears. You're going to, and, and just so you know, it might be a hundred years of hell on earth, or, but here's the truth. It's going to be absolutely phenomenal for you on eternity. So you know what? Swallow your pill now. Get it over with because eternity is going to be a beautiful thing. People, I'm not joking. I'm so excited when we get to heaven. You, listen, you young people who are like so young, I don't even remember how young you are. But the point is this. When we get to heaven, we're going to have a blast. Okay? We're all going to be the same age. Okay? And we're going to, have, oh, we're going to eat and never get fat. Okay? We're, and we're not going to have zits. Okay? And it, we're not going to be married. We don't have to date. There's no texting. There's no, there's no tweeting or Twitter. What do you call it? Twitter? What did Musk just buy? Twitter? or Twitter, or I don't know what he bought. Who cares? Okay, we're just going to have a blast. No taxes. Some of you adults should be rejoicing. <laughs> Let's pray before this goes south. <laughs> With every head bowed, every eyes closed, I'm not even joking when I say this. There's a person, I'm not saying they're Jezebel, but there's a person in your life there's a person in your life who is giving you such spiritual peer pressure and you need the Holy Spirit to give you strength against them. If that's you, now listen to me, I'm not trying to embarrass you. I'm not trying to embarrass you, but I want you to be real with God. There's a person in your life at work or it's a relative or a church and they're, 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 there's a spiritual oppression on you from them. And you need the Holy Spirit to give you the strength and the wisdom on how to deal with this situation. If that's you, please just stand to your feet right now. I want to pray for you. There's a person in your life, maybe at school, at work, or something. It's a spirit. And they don't even have to be a Christian, but there's a person in your life. There's, they're giving you spiritual oppression right now. Just stand to your feet right now. We're going to pray. Father. In Jesus' name, I want to thank you, first of all, for these people who are honest. And they're standing because they're, they want you to touch them and give them strength. So, Holy Spirit, give them strength. Give them power. People on live stream, give them strength. Give them power. Give them strength. Give them power. Lord, give them the wisdom on know what to do, know how far to get away or how far to minister to them. Lord, protect them. We plead the blood of precious Jesus over them. In Jesus' name, amen.